Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got something special lined up. Pure speed, stunning visuals, and next level energy. Let's dive right in. In Fusion, we're working with our base video already in place. Now, to get started, we'll need two background nodes. One merge node, a text node, and of course, a media out node. Let's grab a regular text node. Then hit Shift plus space, and add a drop shadow right after it. Now let's type in our text. I'm going with Porsche, but you can enter anything you like. Next, choose a font that fits the mood, something bold and clean usually works great. Then adjust the size to make it pop on screen. Let's move on to the drop shadow. Here, we'll tweak the size, decrease the blur, and adjust the distance and angle until it looks just right. Now let's bring in two background nodes. The first one is just a solid color. We'll use it temporarily while working, just to make things easier to see. The second one will be our gradient background. Set it to reflect mode, and pick two colors to create a smooth transition. This will give us that clean, modern look behind the text. Set the gradient type to reflect. This lets us define two main colors that will blend across the text. It's a great way to add some visual interest and give the text a bit of character. Now let's bring everything together with a merge node. After that, select the text node, go to the shading tab, and change the type to image. This gives us a new input on the node. Connect our gradient background here. Then, switch the level from character to full image. And just like that, the gradient is now applied directly to the entire text. Now let's connect the drop shadow to our solid background. This helps us see things more clearly as we work. Then, add a brightness node right after, and slightly darken the background to reduce contrast. This makes editing a lot easier on the eyes. Now let's bring in a fast noise node, and connect it to our text effect. For the gradient, set one side to white and the other to black. Then bring the alpha all the way down to zero. This gives us a clean mask that we can use to blend or distort the text effect later on. Set the gradient type to linear. Then adjust the transition so it sits right in the center. You can also give it a slight angle, to add a bit more motion and depth to the look. Now let's switch over to the noise section. Here, we'll crank the detail up to 10. Set the scale to around 16, and push the contrast up to 10. This gives us a bold, high-frequency texture that's perfect for effects. Now let's go back to the color tab in the fast noise node. Set a keyframe for the offset at the very beginning. Pull it all the way down so the pattern is completely out of view. Then move forward to the point where you want the transition to end, and set another keyframe with the offset back in place. Now select the text node, hit Shift plus space, and add a displace node. This will let us distort the text using the noise pattern we just animated. Connect the fast noise to the green input of the displace node. This lets the noise drive the distortion. Set light power to around 0.2 to create a highlight across the transition. Then adjust X and Y to control the direction and strength. Low values keep it subtle, higher ones make it more intense. Now let's add two bitmap nodes, and connect the output of the displace node to both of them. We're going to use them right away to isolate and control parts of the effect. On the first bitmap node, enable invert. This flips the mask, so the bright and dark areas are reversed. On the second bitmap, set the paint mode to multiply. And on the first bitmap, set both center X and Y to 0.499. This creates a subtle white outline around the text, which we'll use later to enhance effects like soft glow or fast noise. Now let's add a second fast noise node, and connect it to the second bitmap. This adds extra texture and variation to the mask, making the effect more dynamic. In the second fast noise, unlock the X and Y scale. Then set X scale to 50, and contrast to 10. Set the seethe rate to around 0.5 for smooth, animated movement across the mask. Connect a soft glow node to the second fast noise. Then adjust the glow colors to match the look you're going for. This adds a glowing texture that interacts nicely with the mask. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now add two more soft glow nodes in a row, and connect the final one to the merge node. This stacks the glow effect, making it richer and more intense. Now we're switching the background to the video. From here, I'll just be adjusting the soft glow nodes. Small tweaks, but they'll have a big impact on the final look. On each soft glow node, we'll lower the gain. 
and shift the color toward red. This gives the glow a more focused, intense look, adding heat and energy to the final result. We'll add a brightness contrast node after the second fast noise. By clipping the black and white values, we keep everything within a clean 0 to 1 range, which eliminates dark edges and stabilizes the final glow effect. That's it for this stunning effect. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. In this video, we're creating a cinematic lightning text effect in DaVinci Resolve. On the Fusion page, add a 3D text, a 3D renderer, and a background node. Connect the 3D text to the 3D renderer, then to Media Out. Enter your text, adjust the size, and you can choose a different font. Open the extrusion settings, set bevel depth to 0.0001 and width to 0.006. This keeps the bevel thin and subtle, so the text edges look clean. Go to the shading tab, turn off use one material, then change the bevel material to image. We do this so we can create a new connection point for the bevel. Connect the background node to it. Go to the background node controls, switch it to gradient. Now the thin beveled edges become visible on the text. On the black color, set alpha to zero. Drag the white color to adjust it, then set a keyframe for offset at the start and pull the gradient all the way down. At around two thirds of the timeline, add another keyframe and move the offset so it's fully white. This creates a smooth transition on the bevel, making the text appear gradually. Add a new background node. Change the material type to image. This gives you a new tab where you can connect an image source and attach the background node to it. Change this background to gradient as well. Change the text color to white. Now you can see the gradient inside the letters. In the shading tab, set the mapping level to word. Go back to the background node. Set the alpha of the black color to zero. On the other color, choose any shade depending on the transition you want. I'm using black here as well, and set its alpha to around 0.3 so the video will be visible underneath the text. Set a keyframe for offset at the start and pull the color down. After the two thirds point, Add another keyframe and push the offset until it's fully colored. This way we get a color transition on the text, with the alpha around 0.3. Add another background node. From the Render 3D node, connect the output to this background. This lets us layer and style the rendered text separately from the rest of the composition. Go to the Background Node Settings tab and change the channel to Luminance. This will output only the brightness values, which we can use to drive the look of the text and set the value to around 0.2. This keeps the upcoming rays effect subtle. First, change the color to white, then press Shift plus space and add the rays effect. Connect this to the Render 3D, creating a merge node. Go back to the Edit tab and place the background video under the text. Then go to the Color tab and use Automatic Correction to enhance the background's brightness and colors for a better match with the text effect. If you enjoyed this effect, hit the like button and subscribe for more tutorials. Go back to the Fusion tab and set the raise threshold to zero. The other values can be adjusted to your preference. Keep in mind, the result also depends on the background node's luminance value, since the rays are generated from bright areas. Go back, press Shift plus space, and add two soft glow nodes after the rays. Set the gain to a low value and the glow size to a higher value. These can be adjusted to your preference. Once that's done, go back to the background node and switch it to gradient. Here we want the edges and the center of the text to have different colors, so we add another slider to the gradient. Choose a darker blue for the center and white for the edges. Set the alpha of both edge colors to zero. This makes the center color stand out more, and when we animate the offset, the colors will move across the text. You can use only two colors or even three, it's up to you to choose the look you prefer. Next, go to the offset, set a keyframe at the start, then add more keyframes along the timeline and change the offset value. This creates moving colors across the text. This could also be done using ping pong, so the color movement automatically goes back and forth. We have three more short steps to complete the perfect cinematic lighting effect. Go back to the raise node and add keyframes to the exposure setting along the timeline. By gradually increasing and decreasing this value, we enhance the cinematic feel, adding a natural flicker and variation to the lighting that makes the text effect more dynamic and alive. Go back to the background, add a transform node, reduce its size, then set the wrap option. Add keyframes to create horizontal movements, giving the background a subtle cinematic motion. Back in the edit page, go to effects, 
fine flicker edition and drag it onto the text. Set the speed to 3.5 and the speed length to 0.24. This adds a fast, subtle flicker that makes the text feel more energetic. Preview it with just the text to see the effect clearly. And that's it. Your perfect cinematic lighting text effect is complete. Experiment with the values to match your own style and make your titles truly stand out. Clone effect. First, duplicate your video clip and go to the Fusion tab. Press Shift plus space to bring up the Select Tool window and search for Magic Mask. First, use the Magic Mask to draw on your subject in the viewer. This tells Da Vinci what to track. Set the quality to better for a more accurate result, then track forward and backward. Once the tracking is done, go back to the Edit tab. Now, hold Alt and left click to drag and duplicate the masked video clip. From the Effects panel, search for Directional Blur and drag it onto the duplicated clip. At the start of the clip, set keyframes for Blur Angle and Blur Strength, both at 0. Move to the middle of the clip and set Blur Strength to 0.700. Then go to the end and set it back to 0. Now go to the Inspector panel, under the Video tab. Adjust the position to slide the duplicated clip to the side, this is what creates the clone effect. Set keyframes for position X and Y at the start. At the middle, change X to 600, then back to 0 at the end. This makes the clone slide to the side. Now go back to Fusion, press Shift plus Space, and add Duplicate to enhance the effect. Set copies to 2.3. At the start, keyframe time offset at 0. At around 1 quarter of the clip, set it to 2.2, keep it at 2.2 until 3 quarters, then back to 0 at the end. This creates a motion trail effect, making the clone movement feel more dynamic and stylized. Now go to the Settings tab and uncheck Process Green. This skips the green channel and gives the duplicate a rainbow-like effect. Set a keyframe for blend at 0 at the start. At 1 quarter of the clip, set it to 1, keep it at 1 until 3 quarters, then back to 0 at the end. At this point, you can see the duplication and the added color effect. Now we can go back to the Edit tab. Hold Alt and left drag to duplicate the clip again. In the Inspector panel, set position X to the opposite value at the middle of the clip. This makes the new clone slide in the other direction. Now drag the original masked clip to the top track, so it sits above the blurred duplicates. Let's take it further by adding some motion and energy to the scene. Search for Flicker Edition in the Effects panel and drag it onto the top clip. This adds rapid brightness changes to create a dynamic, energetic feel. Apply the same Flicker Edition effect to the base clip as well. Then, split the base clip into two parts. Next, search for Stretch Blur in the Effects panel and drag it onto the split base clip. Adjust the length as needed, and that's it, your clone effect is complete. Dissolve Burst Effect We'll start in Photoshop by preparing the base images, one for the car and one for the background. In Photoshop, use Select Subject to isolate the car. Then apply Generative Fill to remove it from the background. Once that's done, use Select Subject again on the new image, press Ctrl plus J to put the car on a new layer, and save both the background and the car separately as PNG files. Now in DA Vinci Resolve, switch to the Fusion tab. We need the background and the car PNG images, a Merge node and a Media Out node to display everything in your timeline. First, select the car image and duplicate it with Ctrl plus C and Ctrl plus V. Then press Shift plus Space and add the following nodes, P Render, P Image Emitter, P Turbulence, and P Friction. Connect the car image, Media In, to P Image Emitter, then to P Friction, then to P Turbulence, and finally to P Render. After that, connect the P Render to a Merge node. As soon as we connect the P Render to the Merge node, you'll notice the car image changes, that means the particles are active. Now select the P Image Emitter and go to the Inspector. Set the channel to RGB, style to blob, then adjust the size to around 0.2 or higher until the image looks right. Also set the size variance to 0.1 for a more natural look. Set the lifespan to match the video, and add lifespan variance between 10 and 30. Here I'm just previewing how velocity and velocity variance affect the spread, but I do set angle Z to minus 90 to make the particles fall downward. Let's start the actual setup. At the beginning, Set a keyframe for velocity at 0.01 and velocity variance at 0.5. Since I want the car to break apart more slowly, I'm adding multiple keyframes and gradually increasing the velocity values. 
But for something like a logo, you could keep the values constant, somewhere between 0.1 and 0.15. This part will be a quick cut in. In my case, I gradually increase the velocity to around 0.1 and use velocity variance values between 0.5 and 1. Now that the particle motion is set up, let's move on to fine-tuning how it slows down using p-friction. Set a keyframe for friction at 0.15 at the start, then 0.2 around 1 quarter in and 0.25 at 3 quarters. This gradually slows the particles down as they spread, making the dissolve feel more natural. In p-turbulence, set the random seed to around 11,000. Set strength x, y, and z to 0.5 and density to 50. This adds controlled chaos to the particles, making the breakup look less uniform and more organic. Now go back to the p-image emitter and set temporal distribution to randomly. This makes the particles emit at different times, creating a more natural and less synchronized breakup. Now it starts tracking the image sequence, which can take a while and be heavy on your system, depending on the resolution. After the first merge, add another merge node. Connect the duplicated car image to it, and use the blend setting to fine-tune and improve the overall dissolve effect. First, set the size to 1.4, this helps cover the original image and gives a sharper look at the start of the effect. Then keyframe the blend, start at 1, and gradually lower it through values like 0.4, 0.25, 0.2, 0.15, and finally 0. This keeps the car's silhouette visible as it dissolves, but feel free to tweak the values to fit your scene. Once you're back in the edit page, it's a good idea to set the render cache to smart under the playback menu. This helps Da Vinci play back the effect more smoothly. And that's it, your dissolve burst effect is ready. Now it's your turn to play around and make it your own. If you like the effects, drop a like and stay tuned for the next one.